My stepsister-in-law wanted me to leave everything I have to her kids. My step Sayel is the kind of person who couldn't fathom why any woman would not want to become a mother. She's always been really critical of my choice to be child-free. She always made some catty comments about how I'll never know true happiness. However, when I saw her a few days ago at my dad's birthday party, she seemed to have done a complete 180. She told me again and again how she's supportive of my life choices and shouldn't have kids if I don't want them. I didn't know what to make of this. I just said something like, oh, okay, thanks. But my gut told me that there was more to her sudden acceptance than she was letting on. The phone call I received from her yesterday proved my gut instincts right. She started off with the usual, how are you? We need to get together soon bullshit. Then she began to not so subtly inquire about my finances. What sort of savings do I have? How much I make every year, etc. I of course got irritated and asked her what she meant and to come to the fucking point. She giggled and replied, Well, since you won't be having kids of your own, why don't you make my children your heirs? I didn't know whether to laugh like a maniacal villain or just get pissed. I decided to let her go on. Sill, as you know, your brother and I are planning to have at least four kids. They already have one. So when they're born, you can leave equal portions of your estate to all of them. Me. Uh-huh. Sill, you and that boyfriend of yours say you don't even want to get married, so it's not like you have to leave anything for him, right? Me. Really? Sill, yeah, so I thought instead of your life savings going to waste, they can just go to your family. Me. After I'm dead? Sill, yes. Me. Do you plan to make it look like suicide or an accident, Sill? Uh, what? Me. Since you've planned all of this, you must have made some plans to off me, right? Go on, tell me what it is. Is it something super creative and unusual? Sill, angry in the way that douchebags get when you call them out on their BS. How could you think that? I only suggested this so you wouldn't have the burden of worrying about what would happen to your money when you're on your deathbed. Me. Aren't you a sweetheart? I'll spare you the burden of worrying about me worrying about my money by leaving everything I have to charities that I support. She started blabbering again, but before she could form a full sentence, I hung up. I also called my dad to let him know about this. This morning, I received a call from my stepbrother, and he apologized profusely for what his wife had said. I told him if she ever pulled anything like this again, it will be the last time I speak to them. Story 2. Brought in cake for holiday, a nurse came late and missed out. She filed a safety report with hospital management against me for not properly monitoring the cake disbursement. I work in a hospital, and I was pretty well known around our unit for the cakes I make. Everyone really enjoys them, and I get requests often. They take me a bit of time, so I don't usually just give them away for free to people outside my family. I had numerous people asking me to please make one for the unit for our holiday potluck, and I agreed since it is the holidays. I asked around about flavor preferences and food allergies and made one that seemed to meet all the criteria. Brought it in and left it with all the other potluck items. People apparently pounced in it and several people took more than one piece. It was gone at under an hour. I was flattered by how quickly it went. Unfortunately, one of the nurses who had pestered me the most to bring in the cake got there too late and it was gone. She came to my office and asked where the cake was and I said it was eaten already. She got so upset, told me I should have cut a piece for her and saved it because she wanted it more than everybody. I told her if she wanted it so badly, she should have gone and grabbed a piece herself when we put food out. She stormed off, and I didn't really think more about it. Two days later, I get called by my manager saying a safety report was filed by that nurse because I failed to supervise disbursement of the cake and allowed people to take multiple pieces of cake before others had a piece. In the section for how could this safety event have been avoided, she wrote that I should have baked multiple cakes, enough to feed at least the number of people working X2 to allow for seconds. That would literally be around 50, 60 pieces of cake. Stayed with the cakes until they were completely dispersed, made multiple, multiple announcements to inform people the cakes were available. And lastly, pre-cut the cake into acceptable-sized servings, she then specified 2.5 inches square, and saved pieces for those who most wanted cake. I couldn't believe she used a hospital safety report for a damn cake. I informed my manager that this would never be a problem again because I will never bake another cake for the unit again. Story three, old couple try to take our seats on a plane. Saw a few plane seat related posts, so I thought I would add my story. Few years ago, my SO and I planned a three month trip around the world. Our first flight was from New Zealand, LA. 
12, 13 hours. We booked and paid for our flights, and I added the premium economy seats as I'm 6'3 and wanted the extra leg room. Cost an extra dollar sixty. This flight was with Air New Zealand. The screen has your name on it when you get to your seat. Welcome, Chertothachur. We get on the plane, find our seats, and there is this older couple sitting there, mid-70s. I ask them if they got confused with their seat numbers. They hadn't. I show them my ticket and seat number ABD point to my name on the screen. They then ask me just sit in their seats, which was ten rows back. No leg room. Me. You want me to sit in your seats? OP, old people. Yes, that would be nice, thank you. Me, I paid extra for these seats and would like to sit in them. Please move to your seats, OP. Oh, it's not that bad, there's plenty or leg room me. Yeah, there's plenty of leg room in my seats because I paid for it. I'll help move your bag if you need. Flight attendant comes along because the line is getting long, OP. This man wants us to move seats, F.A. Sir, please go to your allocated seats. Me, here is my ticket. These people are sitting in my seats. I paid extra because I need to leg room. F.A. to old people. Excuse me, you will have to move to your own seats as you have not paid for these seats. Old people. Well, can we please have an upgrade? F.A. Sorry, this is a full flight, so that's not possible. Old people. Pikachu face. I got some stink eyes from other people on the flight. I paid for the extra leg room and I need it. Sorry, guess I'm short the amount. Then you can't have it. What? Work at a toy store. Edit. In Canada. And get this crap all the time, but this is the first time someone demanded a manager over it in the years I've worked here, so here you go. Woman comes to with two items and the subtotal is in the area that she has. I then apply taxes by pressing total and she balks. I had the right amount before taxes, I swear. She laughs while sighing and digging through her purse. Sorry, this is going to take a while. That's perfectly all right. I call someone to cash too, so we have all the time in the world. After she produces about half of her purse, she manages to get within $3 of the total and sighs. $3 short. Jeez. Sorry, this doesn't usually happen. Sorry to hear it. I'll hold the item for you until close if you want to come back. What? You can't just knock three dollars off of it? She actually turns from being sad and embarrassed with a smile to instantly angry and tilting her head at me like I'm stupid. No, you can't really negotiate with store prices. This isn't the same as Facebook or eBay or places like that. I frown. People have literally done this for me at Malwart for like ten dollars though. Really? Over three dollars? I can't have my stuff? She's getting louder at this point and laughing angrily while looking over to other customers for people who agree. No one is. I can hold our store items for you to purchase when you have the money for them. I pull the items away. Ugh. Look, just let me talk to the manager. They always give me deals. It's not okay that I'm being embarrassed like this over three dollars. I call my manager. My manager tells her we can hold the items, but we're not going to keep doing this. A woman leaves with a scowl after claiming we're overpriced. Manager lets me know we did it once for her when her kid was with her because she wouldn't shut up about how she was going to get such a nice toy. But now she can't. My sister needed a job. My sister, unqualified, is looking for a job. She's open to anything. She's broke, hasn't paid her rent in a month, and is borrowing money from my mother, which she has no way of paying back. I know there's a few openings available at work, so I speak to the CEO and put in a good word in the hopes she will get a job and stop taking money from my mother. My sister gets offered a community-based job, full-time, 40 hours, paying about 24 bucks an hour, above average wage in my country. She's offered flexible hours to work around her kids, and she can bring them to work after school so she doesn't have to pay child care. Free health care is also included as there is a clinic on site, amongst other perks. Overall, a great place to work. In true form, my sister questions the salary and requests an hourly rate of between 30, 36 bucks per hour, as working in the community is a hard job. This is more than even my boss gets paid. She then requests to work only six-hour days instead of eight-hour days because she doesn't think she can make full-time hours work. The CEO declines her requests. She emails him saying she feels she is worth more and has other opportunities elsewhere. She still hasn't got a job. I'm humiliated that I put my name out there for it, and that despite her begging for any good job opportunity, she still managed to F it up. Still, lady I sold air mattress to came back a year later to ask for a refund. When I moved in with my now husband, I decided to sell my air mattress, since we now had a guest bedroom with a real bed. 
I posted it on Nextdoor before I realized my local Nextdoor was an utter shit show. I'd had the air mattress for a year or two, only used it twice, and bought it for $1.175. So I listed it for $1.50. I also put in the listing that I'd never had any issues with it. True. A woman emailed me and asked me if she could come see it. I agreed, and she asked me to make sure it was set up so she could check it out. Fair enough. I inflated it and was ready when she arrived. She spent no less than 25 minutes testing it out, lying on it, rolling around, asking me to be quiet so she could listen for air leaks. All was good, and I again told her I'd never had any issues with it, but had only used it twice. After 30 minutes of watching her writhe in my living room, she said she would take it, but only had $1.30. I told her again what I had paid for it, and that I wouldn't take less than $1.50. She told me a long story about her limited income and how it was used and I wouldn't get somebody to pay that much, etc. I refused to budge and she grumpily went home to get more money. I took it, gave her the mattress. She left. I praised the good Lord I would never have contact with her again, right? Wrong. Over a year later, I'm at work and my cell phone rings. I pick it up and here's the conversation. Me. Hello, crazy lady, CL. Uh, hi, this is CL. Long pause. Me. I'm sorry, who? CL. It's CL. You sold me an air mattress a while ago? Me. Oh. Uh, okay, can I help you, CL? Actually, yeah. Once I bought the air mattress, I used it with some friends and they said it deflates a little at night. Me. Okay. CL. I think it had a hole in it. We haven't been able to use it because it deflates. I wasn't sure if I should contact you, but lots of my friends encouraged me to. Me. Getting frustrated and needing to get back to work. Is there something you need, CL? Yes, I'd like my money back. You sold me a defective product. Me. No, I didn't. I told you all the details of the product, gave you a very fair price, and you tested it out yourself before buying it. I also haven't heard from you for over a year. CL. Well, I called to try to give you a chance to do the right thing here. Me. The right thing? I haven't heard from you in a year. If you had an issue in the first week after I'd sold it to you, I might be willing to refund you. At this point, anything could have happened to it. Eh, CL. Well, that is very disappointing. I really think you should refund me because there was a hole in it. Me. I'm not refunding your money. I hung up and blocked her number. I'm sure she's still out there counting her pennies and trying to reach me. And try Got greedy. Got nothing. Was in a UK supermarket, waiting in line for the self-scanning checkouts. Was about four from the front of the queue. Due to technical difficulties, contactless payments in UK you can pay by tapping your card or phone on the card machine were down, and you had to insert your card in the machine and enter your PIN or pay cash. A guy, mid to late 20s, at one of the registers had only brought his phone as he was going to use contactless to pay, so wasn't able to pay for his groceries, which came to a grand total of £2.50, about $3.00. I'm a big believer of paying it forward and karma. So being the good person that I am, I stepped forward and offered to pay. The choosy beggar then says that he actually need a few other bits, so could I wait while he goes to get them? I say, okay, thinking it might be one or two more items, but he brings a whole basket full of groceries, including beer, that would have cost at least pound fifty. I tell him that I'm only paying for the original two items, and he responds with, It's all or nothing. After some painstaking deliberation, I told him that I would have to go with nothing, paid for my shopping, and left. It's been a week, and I'm still in shock that he thought I was going to pay for all his groceries.